Night has fallen and you're weary from travel. Stars fill the sky above, and in front of you is a brightly lit wooden house, the only building you've seen for days. You walk toward the house, hearing the sounds of laughter and talk as you reach the door and push it open. You sit down and join the game. It's a cheap buy-in, and not many of the other players are very good. The lady fiddling with dice gets good cards, but has no real strategy. The man to your right seems to just hold on to the highest cards he has, regardless of suit or any consideration of matches. The man in gray across from you, though, he's good. He already had the largest pile of coins when you bought in, and while your winnings grow quickly, you can't quite catch him. One by one, the other players leave the table, sometimes with peak or with wry humor, leaving their winnings with you or the man in gray. Finally, it's just you and the man in gray. He looks at you, full of humor and winks. Last hand? He deals, you draw, and look at your hand. It's good. It's great. The best hand, in fact. A royal straight flush. Spades. Aces high. But the man in gray pushes forward his whole pile. You're not sure exactly how much it is, but it's more than you've got. You can't match that. The man in gray stops you. Now, if you like, I'll let you wager your word. I know you'll be good for it. Just promise you'll pay the debt, however I ask. Yep. Ten, jack, queen, king, ace. All spades. The man in gray smiles. All right, then. I'll call. Well, your luck wasn't so good, was it? That's quite the hand, but not for the game we're playing. I'm afraid you owe me. Your life, sure. But more than that, your labor. You see, this land is built on stories. It's one big story, this country, woven of many small ones. Few of the small ones are strictly true, and the big story is mostly a lie. All the stories and songs and myths and legends start somewhere with a seed. As they're told and retold and passed around, they grow and change to become the stories we know. To pay your debt to me, you'll be carrying stories, finding the seeds first and then spreading them, telling them onwards so they can begin gaining strength. This is no light task. Stories are heavy. Most of the stories you'll find will be small seeds. They might be true, but they'll grow wild and unbelievable with the telling. The more important stories are the true ones, the ones people will tell you about their own lives. Those often get lost in the weaves of the big story. 
The more true stories you can find and tell, the more you can weave that truth into the big story. Tarnish it a bit, perhaps, but isn't a dingy and battered truth better than a shining lie? Now, go ahead. You tell me a story. I'll trade you some information about your task. You sometimes have to make choices about what kind of story you're finding. Is it a love story? Or a tragedy? Don't gather too many of one kind though. This grand story needs variety. It's just luck. Funny how bad luck seems to follow the folks who already have problems aplenty. Well, try your luck out there in this country. See how the dice treat you. It's not all bad. You'll have to work hard. But I'll give you the gift for seeing the true shapes of people. Not many who can do that. Travel? That's your job. Wander from place to place, gather those stories and spread them. People get bored hearing the same stories over and over. But an old cliché in one state might be a rip-roaring new yarn in another. deepest desires, your greatest wish, heaven, big rock candy mountain, El Dorado, the promised land, that place just over the ridge where they all say that the water tastes just like the sweetest wine. Well, I don't know where that is. It's supposed to be somewhere in this country. Ask the people you meet. They're all searching for the same thing. I'll strip away your flesh to make the journey easier, but still you'll feel pain. Hunger, weariness, thirst and despair. They're all part of stories, the part not often told. And death, yes, but don't worry. As long as your task remains, you come back. Go on your way, seeker. Maybe we'll meet again, or maybe not. Either way, it'll be an experience for you. I'm jealous in some ways. I hope you find what you're looking for. piled in the front yard, ammunition heaped under the mailbox, and a crowd of clean-cut men ripping apart a car in the driveway. The two heavily armed, mud-caked women leaning over the porch railing share the same bored grin. One shouts at you. Lend a couple innocent gals a cigarette? You are about to hand her a smoke when those men draw pistols and shove you hard into the dirt. You know these girls? They demand. 
Once they've dumped your bag out into the road, they decide you're harmless. If you were selling booze, too, you'd have a lot more cash, sneers one. On the porch behind him, the two bootleggers are fingering their empty rifles, grinning in disappointment. Well, I got no This beach is long, stretching toward a receding sea. In the darkness, the sand seems coarse and gray, alien. The stars are dim and distant. It outshines the stars with its presence, a streak of sickly colored light, leaving a trail of distorted fire. It slowly creeps along the sky like a vast worm, though you know that, given the distance, it must be moving at great speed. And there, near the water's edge, a human figure. They stand there, transfixed by the light. One, two, three steps ankles lowering into the surf. Silent collapse into a black wave, bathed in a nameless color. Then, nothing. You shelter beneath a rocky overhang. Above, the clouds turn gray and purple and blue. Lightning arcs between them. The hairs on the back of your arm stand on end. The lightning is so strong that it seems to open the path in the haze above you. You are sure you see massive talons curved around the clouds. The thunder is so immense that the ground trembles. Your lips and hands tingle from the electric charge that fills the air until the dancing lightning passes on over the hills. Mm -hmm. 